Hey, what's up everyone? It is Sunday night once again, which means it's time to wind down your weekend with Bat City Comic Professionals. I am Shannon, aka Small Press Shan, and here with me as usual is Wednesday Phil. What's up, Philip? How's it going? Another week, another week. I just noticed that the TVs were left on with the live stream. Which is always awkward when it's like you look up and you see ourselves. It's weird. Yeah, it, it is weird. Sometimes when I'm in the store and I see it on, I'm just like, can we not have this on? I feel very <laughs> uncomfortable looking up and seeing myself on the TV. Oh, man, but it's so cool because then I'll say like, oh, you know, Phil, and people will be like, yeah, and they point to you. And I'm like, great. It works perfectly for me because then I can talk about like, oh, well, Phil said this book was really good. I don't know if you saw the live stream. And they're like, oh, I did. Yeah, Phil. Like, yeah. And they point to the TV. <laughs> so it's great because you have like this recognizable personality now that people people know who you are and they trust your book recommendation i appreciate that aspect yeah, of it but, but i also i don't want there to be moments where someone's like oh no way that's you oh i like, get it uh, every day <laughs> yeah that i that I, I wouldn't enjoy that to be honest <laughs> well speaking of things you do enjoy you yes. had a really cool week. You got to do a cool thing that you've never done before on Friday. Uh, yes, I got to go to Universal Studios. It turns out I went as a child. Oh. Nice. Um, because I, I remember when I was looking at the website, I, I've ridden the E.T. ride. Oh, nice. Which is in the main one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got to go for the first time in a very long time. Uh, my dad's company, every year has uh, their holiday party at Universal Studios. And after the park closes to guests, uh, they get to go in and only get to do Islands of Adventure, uh, which is half of the Harry Potter stuff. I found out that there's more there's Harry more. Potter. There's more. There's even more. Uh, Jurassic Park. There's the Dr. Seuss land. Um, and then the non-Disney Marvel stuff. Yeah, the like comic stuff. But they've had the rights um, to for forever. And okay. that's actually why Disney World can't put a, a lot of their stuff in. Like they can put the some that's of the weird. characters that like Guardians has a thing. But that's kind of, and like Doctor Strange had a thing, but they can't build that like an Avengers campus, can't build it at Disney World because the rights were sold off back when. That and they're only sense. a mile apart. So, like the yeah. ground line, so they can only, like, they're within too close proximity. So, like, Universal Studios California and, Univ- and Disney California both have, they both have the stuff, but they can't have it here because they're only a mile apart. It's crazy. That's weird. It's weird. But there's also Disneyland in California yes. and also Universal Studios. Yes, but they're World. not anywhere near each other. Disneyland California mm. is in a completely different city. Okay. Uh, it's about an hour and a half. I did not know. That. Away from uh, an hour and fifteen away or so. Okay. Anyway, you had fun. You're gonna read Harry Potter now. Uh, potentially, <laughs> potentially the Harry Potter stuff was the most impressive. Um, which doesn't surprise me, um, but yeah, just the stuff that they yeah. built. It's there also the was, newest in that park, uh, and that makes sense yeah. because it definitely felt like the most improved and high tech, and yeah. you know, it seemed like even when I because Josh and I, I, I went with Josh who is uh, is one of the volunteers here, and um, we walked the park once, and I noticed that there was a lot of rides that people weren't even going on. Um, and we were walking back through after our first go through and I looked at Josh and I was like, where is everybody? No one is here. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, no one is here. Like, did everyone already leave? And then you go back to the Harry Potter and, and that's where there. everybody is. When um, they first opened that, um, even if you got in, like, cause if you're staying at one of their resorts, you get early like admission. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if you got early admission when in that first summer that that opened, the line was four and a half hours long. Uh, that's crazy. It's like the second people went in, they went in. And I remember, cause I was one of the first 2,500 to get a ticket to go to the, to the Harry Potter world. Mm-hmm. And, um, I remember getting there and there was, we, we had, we stayed on property and we went immediately. We were waiting outside and we go in 
and you walk up and it just automatically said 90 minutes and it's like no who came in before me That's uh it also broke down that time when i was on it and we got stuck you know how you swing around uh for the quidditch part yes and you're watching the screen i we got stuck there when you're hanging like at that weird angle weird and i was like this is great i'm not and then they turned the screens off and i was like could i at least watch the movie while yeah, i was doing yeah. this so uh it's a lot of fun i can't wait for you to go to the other side because i know all of your big fandoms from universal are on the other side yes so i'm excited to see your reaction when you meet a minion that's going to be exciting uh because we were we went into they only have like one or two of the stores open where you yeah. can like go in and buy stuff of course harry the whole harry potter world was open but everything else was kind of uh, a pick and choose and i saw that they had uh minions plushies and i was like wait is there minion stuff here there's a whole parade at the other side uh, that's all I'm excited for. That's all I care about. <laughs> well, uh, I'm excited. Uh, you like you brought up Josh. Josh actually gave us this bottle of wine today. Oh, nice. He won it at a competition in school at his school for Teacher Inserts Day, and <laughs> this is a a Seven Oaks Cab Sav, um, and it does say that it's been in a barrel for a year. So you might like it because, but it's got a black currant, a cherry, and vanilla, and some spices. And fill them back for a second. Drink immediately. Whoa. I'm not a fan. <laughs> you did two drinks and you're still not in. <laughs> I, oh, I like it. It's smooth enough. It's not sweet, like too sweet. It's not, It's it's got that, you can taste the oak and you can taste the vanilla, um, which are two flavors that I'm always in for in my wine, but. I think I like less oaky stuff. You do. You seem to pick all the. Less oaky ones, which which I just would like to point out that the other option was I had a Tempranillo, and oh, okay. Josh brought this in, and I was like, this will be a better choice for Phil than my spicy Tempranillo, but now, just so you, you didn't like it anyway. <laughs> well, it's free, so it's always yeah, free I, for you, I guess. I but. mean, you know, I appreciate mixing it up, though, because I feel like last time we had a Tempranillo, didn't we? Last time we had a Pinot Noir. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. It was a time before when... Um, Zach was here. Yes. One of them was. Yeah, yeah one of them was a Tempranillo. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, well, this is uh, J. Lore's uh, Seven Oaks Cab Sab. I think it's pretty good. Um, it says it's good for pairing with, like, beef. And there was another one that was Lasagna dark chocolate. Lasagna or dark chocolate. Yeah, basically all of the standards that you pair wine with. Pasta, beef, or chocolate. So hmm. um, if you're a wet red wine drinker, this kind of just tastes like your basic red wine. Like, this seems like the base level that they start red wines on and then they go in one direction or the other like whether it's going to be a little smokier or a little uh fruitier this kind of seems like it's right in the middle of those two so i can see that yeah this is your base uh i have an exciting thing that i got this week you got to go to universal studios but you didn't get this ultimate greatness that i got this week which is this amazing new tank top. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got a um, friend of the show, Marco Fontanelli, did an incredible one shot called King Jira about a kaiju who just wanted to eat some pizza in the city, thought he was like stomping to attack the, the city, um, but he's just going after pizza. And I, Scout has the best ability to order like anything you want merchandise wise for any of their comics. And so I got a King Jira tank top. Uh, from our friends at Scout, which is just down in Fort Myers. So if you're in the Bradenton area, it's only about an hour and 15 minutes to go check out the Scout store, which is like the same size as Bat City, but just Scout product. It's fantastic. Uh, but I'm really excited. I also learned when I ordered this that they uh, listened to my request over and over and over again, and they're now scooped hoodies for adults. Whoa. And so I'm very excited and cannot wait to be able to get a scoot hoodie um, but I just wanted to do an awesome shout out to Scout, King Jira, and Marco Fontanelli for this dope tank top. I'm very excited about. Um, I know. Be jealous. It's great. I was looking to see if they had King Jira shoes because you can order a lot of the Scout books on, like, the artwork on, like, Converse, essentially. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, if they have some, like, King Jira shoes, I will wear them every day. But I didn't see any King Jira shoes. So, you know, next time. Is there a t-shirt version of that? There is. Okay. You can put it on any. It's one of those, like, it's yeah. kind of like a red bubble type thing. Oh, okay. Through, okay. But it's through their site. So you can go in and then you can kind of just pick all the different options you want of how you would like your thing to be. That's good. I'm not a tank top person. 
Yeah. I don't have the shoulders for it. And you never know until you try. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Okay, you've yeah. tried. Then you, I can't hold you responsible for uh, not trying. Well, we don't have near as many comic books this week, so we're not going to take up three hours of your time. Maybe? Possibly. We might. <laughs> Let's be honest. It could still happen. Um, but we're going to kick it off with some books that came out this week that we just really like um, and let you know what's going on. So I'm going to let you kick it off with Saturday Morning Adventures, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Uh, IDW has just, I mean, they're already knocking it out the park with the, the current ongoing Turtles series that we have. Um, but it, they made it even better by now doing one based off of the old cartoon show. Um, and it's wonderful because the art style is very much like that. And this is going to kind of be your episodic style comic book. Last issue, uh, there was some virtual reality involved. This issue, completely different storyline. Um, but, you know, as always, you get to see the turtles doing what the turtles do best. Um, in this, we have Shredder and Krang who are trying to steal a weapon. Uh, as usual. Yeah, as usual. They have. They think that this is going to change, you know, everything, and they're going to be able to take over the world. Um, and so they got to go get it, and Krang sends um, one of his rock warriors from Dimension X, um, Lieutenant Thrum. That's why Matt likes it so much. I read it, and it didn't even occur to me that the Dimension X part. Go on. <laughs> it's not General Craig. No. Same race, probably? Yeah. I think so, yeah. But this guy's Lieutenant Thrum, and uh, they send him out to help Shredder and Bebop and Rocksteady get this weapon. And essentially, in the kerfuffle between the Turtles and Thrum and Bebop and Rocksteady, this weapon goes off, and um, it shocks Michelangelo and Lieutenant Thrum. And so the idea of this weapon is not actually to cause violence, but what it does is it lets you see the other person's perspective um, for a very brief moment. And the idea, of course, is that when you see that other person's perspective, you won't want to uh, enact violence on them. You'll kind of see it from their perspective and think, oh, you know, maybe uh, we can solve this a different way. And what ends up happening is, you know, Lieutenant Thrum now kind of has... Uh, Michelangelo's perspective, which if and if you're gonna pick any turtle that you you know want to have the perspective of, it's Michelangelo. <laughs> and uh, so what ends up happening is Lieutenant Thrum, which is perfect, being um, you know a rock warrior, is that he ends up going to a rock concert, mm -hmm. and the song that's sang on the stage is uh, about being who you want to be. And not, you know, and that you don't have to fall into line with what people tell you. You can be who you want to be. And, you know, that kind of changes how Lieutenant Thrum views the world. Um, it's it's wonderful. It's got everything. I mean, you even have the turtles dressing up in, like, cool 80s gear to go to this concert. Uh, the blimp is in it. I mean, is it. this is honestly one of those things where if you watch the cartoon and or collected the toys um then it has a lot of those really wonderful things that you want to see as a turtles fan and i feel like that's all this is going to be is just mm -hmm. each issue is going to be pure fan service for turtles fans i love it because it felt like one of the episodes that's just trying to sell all the toys and yes. <laughs> uh, playmates is putting out all the toys again and all of the toys appeared in this comic issue and i was like oh we're just we're doing that episode like hey don't forget the toys exist kids but also you still got your heartfelt message you still got all the comedy i love that they're like michelangelo where would you go if it was you and he's like to eat pizza duh yeah. like, and i love that they keep making fun of raf to not make jokes because raf's not funny um, and yet he is the one that's making all the puns in this. All the puns this time. So. And they're funny. <laughs> I, I'll be honest. They were. They all, there were moments in this where I was like, I really want them to make toys of these. I really do. Like, if you can give me the Lieutenant Thrum with this Kitar gun that oh, he has. Seriously. I want that. Right. They right. Don't, don't tempt them. They'll do it. <laughs> Look, I mean, it's a great way to, you know, kind of cross-promote because then you can start putting the ads Mm -hmm. for the toys in the comic 
And then like all nerds, they're going to be sitting there and being like, oh my God, that's an actual toy. Oh, can you order this for me? And I'm surprised oh. the Playmates hasn't approached IDW about being in here since they are doing all of those original or even uh, the best action ones. But the Playmates being the original like recreation of mm-hmm. those like facsimile toys, essentially. It's like, I'm surprised there's not ads for them in, in these books. Yeah, it feels like a huge missed opportunity it's, for them. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're a Turtles fan, this is definitely a book that you have to be picking up. Yes. Um, because it hits all those things that you need um, as a fan. So Absolutely. yeah, it's only two issues in, and uh, you don't have to read issue one. You know, there's yeah. no continuation, there's no references to issue one. Um, but yeah, definitely pick it up. Yeah. Um, Marco just joined us and said, nice shirt. Thanks. Thanks, Marco. <laughs> um, but also, uh, Marco said, I will continue to repeat this until the day I die. We need a comic with TMNT and King Jira. IDW, I'm here for you. And we are here to buy that comic. Uh, if you make it IDW, we will buy it. I would love to see a crossover with King Jira and, and the turtles eating pizza. It'd be amazing. I feel like this is one of those times where we need to start like a, a Twitter hashtag campaign Mm -hmm. where enough if we can get that hashtag out there and trending then idw is like well we gotta well we gotta do it right it's just like what do we make our hashtag like i'll work on that right i'll spend some time you know i'll get some whiteboards and (laughs) charlie day like draw it out yeah Yeah. Print out pictures. <laughs> and stick and, it up there. Where yeah. did they cross? Where? What sewer would they meet yeah. at? And like, it can be the the name of the street. I'm I'm here for that. But I feel uh, like it's gotta be pizza. It's like right pizza party, like King Jira pizza party. Also, can we just have a like pizza party with King Jira and the Ninja Turtles personally? Like I'm. Here I for mean, that would be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, let's stick with IDW for a minute. We were talking about their originals and everything that they're doing and how they've been killing it with these um, these new titles over the last couple of weeks. We've got issue two of Earth Divers. Uh, oh my gosh. So Earth Divers, if you haven't, if you didn't read issue one, it is the story of a group of people who realize that the entirety of the world's destruction started because of America. And the downfall, when they pinpoint the downfall of America, uh, it's it's from the very beginning. And so they're like, oh, once Christopher Columbus discovered America. It's his fault. It's, it, it destroyed everything. And so what's the one thing we can do to save the world? We're going to have to go back in time and kill Christopher Columbus. And um, I, it's been so great. Like, you've got a bunch of people who have no, like, real like they're not warriors or anything like that it's like a guy who's a linguist is the one they send back in time so that he can actually uh talk to the people but of course he gets there and he messes up which version of spanish he's supposed to be speaking immediately and ends up that they're like no like this guy's a traitor so now he's having to go through all this stuff and prove that he's not a spy and they're in the future and they're just standing there outside of this cave that sends you back in time like how do we know if he made it how do we know when columbus died like is something gonna happen are we gonna see this um so you get two different stories you get the story of the guy back in time on he is actually on the pinza um, of the three Columbus ships and uh, he's trying to get closer and closer to Christopher Columbus and uh, then you've got the the group that is here in the mo- or in the future uh, in America trying to figure it out and things just got a little bit weirder at the end of this issue and we're bringing in some other like possible crazy supernatural weird stuff going on so um, if you're like time travel is not really for me you're not really getting a book about time travel you just got a guy who went back in time and he's living a life there and like not even trying to get back he's like okay my this is a one-way mission and then you've got the people here and they're kind of dealing with some all the all the other fallout so uh, it's super cool you get a couple of different crazy stories you get a lot of um different backgrounds and stuff that come into it and the type of like the the people are the way they interact with each other it's like they don't really want to be on the same team and they kind of all just got stuck on the team because they're like the last remaining people but really good it's a great one of the original books coming out from idw so if you haven't checked out an idw original yet this is only on issue two so it's a good time to jump in 
And I like this too because you know there was all th- there's always that whole like oh if you could go back in time, mm-hmm. what would you do? And most people were like I'd go back and kill Hitler. Yeah. But you've never heard anyone be like you know what I'm gonna go back and kill Christopher Columbus. Yeah. So he doesn't ever discover America. We're gonna put that in quotes still. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And yeah. They even talk about that. They're like, what if what we do actually causes like him to make it actually to America, America proper, like, and it makes things even worse. And so it's like, oh, this could be bad. Or what if, like, Christopher Columbus wasn't the worst person that could have discovered America? And so in this one, it's kind of like, is it going to change anything? We don't really know. I love it. It's a great concept. Yeah, I love the concept. I, You know, I always like when they mess with time travel in some way and try and just spice it up. And so, yeah, I think it's a great concept, and, and I, I like the back and forth. Um, you know, I kind of feel like as we get to know these characters a bit more, it's going to become even more interesting. Absolutely. Um, yeah, issue two. Um, so you still have time to hop in and, and not feel like there's so much that you have to catch up on. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, uh, Matt said, Marco, I bet you draw a totally rad crane. And, and Marco actually responded and said that he did in France at an event a couple of weeks ago. And so he's going to try to find that sketch. And I cannot wait to see what that looks like. Um, up next, issue two of Old Dog from Image Comics and uh, Declan Shalvey. Yes, Declan, Declan Shalvey taking on um, both the writing and the art on this one. Um, this isn't one where I really enjoyed that first issue. It's the the typical like old guy who's been around in the CIA or as a police officer for so long. And um, what you find out in the first issue is that he is basically the guy that they call on when nobody else wants to do it. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) And um, something crazy happens at the end of issue one. It takes like a whole nosedive and uh, he wakes up with maybe super, not, I wouldn't say superpowers, but something. He kind of feels like he turned into Deathstroke. Like he's got yeah. like the like the super soldier kind of serum, but not mm-hmm. really. And he's just kind of in there. But he does kind of feel like he went from just a regular old spy to like Slade Wilson overnight. Right. And so, and he was in a coma for eight years. So now he is out of the coma. And, you know, of course, like any government agency, they're going to put him to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, in this issue, is trying to extract a guy. Um, He finds out that there is um, somebody that has information, is important, um, you know, and could be an asset in some way. And so um, the whole thing is they got to go in and get this guy, him and his uh, his partner, who's referred to as the the retriever. Mm -hmm. He's Rottweiler and uh, she's the retriever. And um, and yeah, of course, as expected, you know, things go wrong. And uh, he's put to the test. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I, this is, I like this book. I really like the story. I love the art. Um, I kind of like that in this one too, you, you're you starting to see some of the other players in this mm-hmm. world, um, some of the higher ups that are kind of behind the scenes. Um, also, you know, some, some people that he's worked with in the past. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, things are kind of starting to unfold a little bit. And, uh, you know, getting to see a little bit of the bits and pieces. And every issue seems to have, like, three turns. Like yeah. You're like, oh, that's the turn for this issue. And then it's like, nope, just kidding. Uh, here's another one. And so I like that it keeps you guessing and it keeps it moving. And it definitely feels like those classics by, like, it feels like if Jason Bourne got old and they brought him back. Like, yeah. this is kind of what we would see. Yeah, imagine, like, the... Born trilogy, but with Clint Eastwood, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, or Jeff Bridges, mm-hmm. or any number, Liam Neeson, mm-hmm. any of the guys who were action stars yeah. that came back, yeah, any of those guys. Um, but this is a really great book. Um, I love the premise, I like where it's going, and I think it's just gonna get better from here. I think so. Yeah. Also, it took me until you said it out loud to realize that. Retriever as in, like, Golden Retriever or Labrador Retriever. Like, it's still oh. a dog name. Like, because it's the young person, like, the young dog with the old dog. Yeah. 
I totally did not get that um, <laughs> until right now. I was like, retriever, because she's the one that, like, retrieves them from the yeah, mission. Like, yeah. that's all I thought this whole time. And then I was like, oh, it's also a dog reference. Look at you, Declan. I see you. Um, from, what is this, Black Mask? Who did this book? No, this is one of those, this like, is one of those, um, like, really, really small press. Black Tooth. Black Tooth Comics. Uh, this is Emo Girl Issue 3. Yes. Um, oh God, I just want to keep touching. I love those crushed like paper covers. Yeah. Sorry, like if you own this book, but I just rubbed my fingers all over it. But um, <laughs> CGC people everywhere are cringing at the fact I just rubbed my fingers all over it. But issue three of Emo Girl from Black Tooth Comics. Um, this was a really interesting book in that the first issue came out. Or, I mean, it's it's a small press book, so we're getting it, like, every quarter almost, it feels mm -hmm. like. And so it was really interesting because it is one of those first books that acknowledged within its storytelling the COVID pandemic. And yeah. it's they're actually still wearing masks in the story right now. They're still talking about it directly as COVID. It's like for a book that has absolutely nothing to do with COVID, it was one of the first times that we've seen a fantasy story acknowledge that this is a time, that's what the time frame is. Um, but it is all about a young girl whose dad is a monster hunter. And she's been trained her whole life to also be a monster hunter. And that's kind of, you know, led them to some sticky situations like the dad being arrested because people think he's a murderer. She ends up in foster care and then, you know, needs to have counseling because they assume that she's delusional. And she's like, look, guys, I'm going to do your counseling. I'm going to do your stuff. And they're like, great. Are you learning anything? Are you not going to change? Like, you don't believe in monsters anymore, right? And she's like, oh, no, they're still real. And I'm going to kill them. But, like, I'm going to do all of your steps that you think I need no. to do. And uh, I know this was one that surprised us. Like, when we first heard about it, we were like, emo girl, what is this about? Yeah, well, being an ex-emo person myself. Ex? Uh, okay. I mean, okay. you know, <laughs> you know, uh, I've, I've buried it and then occasionally it comes out, but, uh, I, the, the title was definitely appealing to me. And then when you find out it's kind of like a Buffy the Vampire mm -hmm. Slayer, um, but set during the pandemic, I was a little intrigued. Yeah. Um, and that second issue was, was pretty cool. Cause you kind of got to see her in action. Yeah. You know, you got to see her fighting. Um, and you got, you know, and that's kind of what you want. You want a little bit of that action. But now we kind of, in this issue, the pandemic is more prevalent. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, everything's in lockdown. Uh, so you get to see her in lockdown. Um, it, it's also interesting because they have, uh, on the page I just showed, um, the, the riots. Yeah. The Black, the Black Lives Matter uh, protests. Um, protests uh, were also in this issue. So... I do really enjoy that. This issue was a little confusing, though, um, and I think it's just from the time jumping. I think so, too. Um, because, and I also am not sure if this is issue three and four. It, it, no, it's an ad. This is an ad for issue four. It says that it is out uh, oh, okay. in, uh, it shipping oh, okay. in December. Yeah, I got confused, too, and uh, I thought we were getting a second issue in the middle. But yeah. No, it's just an ad. Because then, uh, yeah, because I was like, oh, is this just the continuation? Um, and so, yeah, and then all of a sudden, the, I was a little confused by the fact that, like, she she steals a car mm -hmm. while monster hunting, mm -hmm. and then someone tries to steal the car, and they were... Running away from monsters. Yes. Yes, and, and you get kind of, okay, now she has to help somebody. So it gave her a new character and, some, and, and a direction for her monster hunting, but it was definitely, like, how did we get to this? this point for a second in there but then once I got back in it I, like it didn't take me so far out of the story that I was like wait what's going like you know I can't follow along from here on it was just like oh let me go back and double check what I missed uh because I must have scanned too quickly and it kind of had a little bit stronger of a transition once I I kind of went back and looked at that but it was definitely one of those where I did the same thing because I think I was too focused on did I miss an issue end up and then like and come back but well because it says two years ago yeah and then it says june 6th mm -hmm. so is that june 6 two years ago no that's now yeah and so that's the time jump thing like the the transitions got okay. confusing but. yeah it was i was very confused um it yeah now i think i i think i understand the timeline 
Um, but I, I do enjoy this. Yeah. It, 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 the pacing in this one was a little weird. Um, but I like that we are getting the, you know, Buffy S character. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm always down for monster hunting. Without it being just about like a joke, joke, joke. Like it's not like a beat and then a joke, a beat and then a joke. It's kind of like, okay, we're not really focusing on that. We're actually focusing on monsters. And I like that it's, it's kind of. You know, bringing in those monsters, but also like, hey, we're want you to remember this is purely set in the real world, and this is set right now, and giving us that really big guideline of what time frame we're looking at, yeah. and how does it relate to that? Like, how would you do these things if you were in the that situation? I also like that she has to keep reminding him that it's zombie without the e. yeah, <laughs> like no, we're not we're not looking at those kind of zombies. We're looking at. The zombie, like the person who is a slave, essentially to a vampire. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. I I definitely think it's worth checking out if you're somebody who likes to go out and find those a lot smaller presses. Mm -hmm. Like, what's way out on the fringe of comic book publishing right now? Um, I think this is definitely a fun one. Yeah. Um, And I'm curious to see where it goes. And I'm also curious to see if they continue to make... Uh, the pandemic play a big role in it Mm -hmm. and what that's gonna mean yeah like why did you choose that like I'm I'm curious about that um but I'm glad they put that ad in there because it has been like when does emo girl come out again and now we know like the next one will actually be here in December so the fact that it's gonna get on that monthly schedule is gonna be nice um up next uh from Dark Horse they're Reprints of comicsology stories, essentially. Uh, this is issue two of Night of the Ghoul from Scott Snyder and Francisco Francavilla. Yes, what uh, a magnificent creative team. It's it's true. You could not. Uh, you, I mean, other than throwing Jock in there too, somehow, <laughs> like you know, getting that like full Black Mirror team, like you know, this is. Uh, putting Frank and Scott together is always going to be a win. And um, this is issue two. These are extremely oversized issues. The way that the Comicsology originals have been working is it's basically like two or three issues in one. Um, Kind of the same way with We Have Demons, where it was only three issues, but really you got that six-part miniseries. This is the same thing. And uh, this is the story of a father and son who are kind of on the outs from each other. They haven't been getting along. You know, the parents are getting divorced and the kids don't really, like the kid doesn't really want to spend time with his dad anymore. Um, So the dad's kind of trying to win him over with this, you know, hobby that they've had together, which was finding all of the footage and all the information for the Night of the Ghoul movie. Which is one of those lost footage, like, oh, cursed films, everybody who's ever watched it has died kind of situations. And he has now not only found almost all of the footage, but he has found the creator of the film in uh, essentially in what he's been told is a nursing home. But is actually when they get there ends up being something much like deadlier. Um, But I love the way they do this book because we are in the very first part of the very first issue you know, he tells this creator, hey, we found your footage. And he's like, you didn't watch it, did you? And he's like, yes. And he's like, well, now you're cursed too. And it's like, ooh, okay, we're doing that. Like, we're going for it. And so what I love about that is, as with all those things, we're watching it too. Because uh, in between, as he's telling the story and as things are happening, it cuts to the movie. And so you start every, like, few pages, you're actually reading the movie you're seeing the movie play out in the comic and it's like ooh, is this a, is this the movie or is this the backstory for the man like what are we seeing what are we doing but it's like oh are we also cursed now because we're also seeing the story of the ghoul um it's so cool the way they do it and of course frank villa is this master horror artist so um and really good at those you know world war ii world war one time period artist Mm -hmm. piece and so the fact that that's when the ghoul story is supposed to take place is during the war um you get these great horror world war like 
images from Frank Avila that are just fantastic. But um, issue two picks up with the dad and the son, and the son has discovered what's going on, he thinks, at this facility. And um, their choices to leave the facility um, while they can get interrupted and new decisions are made and things get way worse and way worse and way worse. And I don't really know that I could say worse before they get better. I think it's just going to get worse. Um, really great. If you're a fan of any of those lost footage stories, you're kind of going to have an idea of this, but you get that awesome Scott Snyder writing. I think he's such a great indie writer. Um, I know everybody loves him for his Batman stuff, but I think we miss out on a lot of Scott Snyder indie stuff if you don't jump into it. And I think this is a great one to do that on because it is only going to be three issues. So one and two are out. You can jump in. You can get. You can be prepared for that last issue, um, and get a really really cool horror story. Or wait and hope that because of Star Course there wasn't a We Have Demons hardcover. That's right. Okay. Never mind. Pick up the single issues, <laughs> or the trade paperback since I guess there's not going to be a hardcover right. for this. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is you know two people who are very talented at what they do. Mm-hmm. And the story's great. You know, it's it's wonderful because it's kind of tied into, like, Universal Monsters. Um, but, like, this is the Universal Monster. Like, this is the monster at the top of the list. Um, but, yeah, this is definitely one that you cannot miss. Mm-hmm. If you're a comic book fan, this is one of those you got to be picking up and reading. Yeah, and, sure. and if you're not a comic book fan and you're like, I want to check out a comic book... This is a good one to just, because it is contained in th- within three issues, mm-hmm. and it is that great horror story, and it does have good art, and it does have, you know, a little bit of everything tied into it. Um, and you get that family drama of, like, is the dad going to work out his situation with the son? Like, what's going on? Why mm-hmm. isn't the couple, like, together? Like, you get all of that dynamic built into the story as it's happening, um, which is one of those things that Scott's really good at is throwing in random little family tidbits here and there that make you wonder, like, is the dysfunction of this family tied to the, you know, supernatural thing going on, or is this family just having a dysfunction? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. Night of the Ghoul, Night issue the ghoul. number two. Uh, let's get, I don't know, I was going to say happier, but I don't know that we'll get happier. <laughs> let's get brighter. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we've got issue three, three. of yes. the Evanescence, uh, what is the subtitle? Echoes from the Void. Echoes from the Void. This is from Opus Comics. Uh, you get two stories in this issue, and um, one of them is a continuation from the last one. But the first story is a brand new story that is absolutely gorgeous. Um if you've seen the show, you know that I'm a huge fan of Marguerite Savage's art, and we get a new artist that I don't know. It's like Clarice, Clarice, Clarice. Yes. Um, who has a very similar style, that beautiful watercolor, um, style, and you get the story, kind of a selkie story. It's kind of a the fish out of water, literally. Um, the story of a young woman who has who is eight sea creature and has the ability to turn into a human and one day and she leaves her scales on the beach which is actually a folklore story and and like I said it is kind of the selkie story and uh, one day she leaves her her scales on the beach to go walk around and enjoy the world and finds comes back to find somebody has stolen them and now she is stuck as a human until she can find them Um, ends up going home uh, with a person who offers her shelter and they build a relationship together and get married and have a child and she lives kind of a a life. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a happy life. I don't know if it's the right life. Neither does she. And I love getting to see her kind of say, like, I had this experience. I don't know if it was the experience for me. Um, And then you kind of see how this moment plays out and you've got your stories of double crossing and um, emotional and um trials and tribulations it is a beautiful story the art is gorgeous i love the actual story itself um feels like you're just reading a folktale um and the art works so perfectly for that but i'm going to turn to my evanescence expert now and ask you what song is this oh it's from swimming it's the song swimming home and it's one of the like it's like the tail end of their self-titled album from 2011 
um, which actually um, is probably the album I've listened to the least okay. of all the Evanescence. But um, yeah, I think this kind of this goes back to I think Amy Lee's mistrust in man a bit with this song um and makes it into this like beautiful fairy tale which is just it's such a wonderful and like you said i mean the art is just so spectacular um yeah i i was blown away by the mm -hmm. first uh by the first story in this and then of course your second story is part two um from um the last issue uh, it was the second story in issue two um and it's about a a world where um, there's the, basically they live in, in a closed off city and are told that don't go outside the walls, stick to the rules. And there's something, there's some evil thing out there that is preventing us from being able to live a great life. And, uh, through lucid dreaming, she kind of discovers that maybe that's not the case. Yeah. Um, and so in this issue, you get the wrap up of that story. Um, and it's great. I mean, I love it. I wanted more. I was kind of hoping this was going to stretch out maybe into a third issue. Um, or I mean, a third part necessarily, but um, we don't. They wrap it up, and uh, I like the way it was wrapped up, to yeah. be honest with you. They honestly could have made the entire series that story, and it yeah. would have still been a really, really great series. I'm so happy they didn't and that we're getting these other stories because these first these front stories have been, the, for the last two issues, have also been really beautiful. Um, but... This could have been the entire series. It was strong enough that they could have made a six part, I guess five part because it's Opus. They could have made a five mm -hmm. part series out of just that story, and it would have still blown blown your mind. Yeah, uh, I was, uh, you know, and I forgot that they they do five issues for all these, um, for all these series. But yeah, I, I was happy that they wrapped it up. I I was very excited to see um, how they were going to do that. But I mean, this is I, I I'm a slightly biased. But I think this has been the best of all the the music, the ones. music attached to bands in some way. Yeah. Um, just it's, because the artwork alone, I think, has just been magnificent. Honestly, the storytelling. And uh, they've been picking different creators for every single issue of this, like except for that backstory that's had the same. But they've been picking different creators for all of them. And they have just found some amazing writers and some amazing artists and uh, I'm really curious to see what they do in the next two since this is only issue three. Mm -hmm. uh, the first issue was only one story. Right. And so I'm curious to see if issue four will go back to that or if we'll still continue to get two stories um, because they did make this one. You know, there wasn't really a need to make that other story two-parter, like right. two different issues, if, if they do go back to just one and one. So... Um, I'm kind of curious to see how this plays out and see how long this one goes because Evanescence does have a, a large, a large discography of songs that are kind of storytellable. Yeah. So I'm curious yeah. to see if it will only be five issues, if they'll keep going, if they'll do uh, double stories and the rest of it. Like, there's just too much to tell. Also, I see on the back that they're doing Black Veil Brides next. I'm not okay with that. I was one of those, like, tail end of my emo, like, as I was leaving high school they kind of came in uh towards the tail end of my days in in the emo world and i was never a huge fan of theirs but uh also i look at that cover and i'm like i kind of want to read that thing. oh you're gonna read it um the other thing speaking of uh since we're talking about music comics did you see the announcement from vault this week I did not. Vault has been working in secret behind all of our backs to create their own uh, musical imprint. So there will be mm. musical, com like music themed comics coming from Vault. And the first two people they're working with, they did announce, is going to be Metallica and Pete Wentz from Fallout Boy. So I'm um, not really surprised about the Pete Wentz one, honestly. It's just, yeah, I expected. Somebody from Fallout Boy would eventually want to write a graphic novel. Um, I am Senator kind of Patrick, surprised. Though. I thought it would be Patrick, honestly. He's the he's the lyric writer for the band. Yeah, it's so in it's interesting. I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Um, I'll be honest. I'm not excited for either of those. We're I've, gonna see what happens. And I'm a Fallout Boy fan, right? But of all the members of Fallout Boy, Pete Wentz is always my least favorite, and I've never cared for Metallica either. So I grew up a Metallica fan. 
Um, so I'm actually curious to see what happened, like what this means, like what are we doing? I'm really curious because it is Vault too. So I've never had a bad story from Vault. So I'm kind of like, what are we going to do? Where is this going? Um, but music comics are continuing to be a thing. Poppy just announced another new graphic novel with Z2. Sweet. Not about her. Actually a made up character, like outside of even her character from her videos and her songs. It's going to be completely unrelated to any of that. Um, and then Z2 also just uh, released the first le- round of like reviews from Publisher Weekly and things like that for the their Weird Al illustrated graphic novel. And it's getting, of course, rave, rev- like, rave reviews. Everybody's loving it because who doesn't love everything about Weird Al? Like, and let's just keep going with music. Like, mm-hmm. let's bring... There's so many bands that you know tie the that create these worlds i mean you look at like even iron maiden yeah you know and and freaking there's so many metal bands that have like these characters that they've created in these universes so i'm on board if they want to keep doing this and expand it out and keep going well um, we keep saying we should bring the free runner comic back since we were making a a comic about matt's band I mean, now's for, the well, time. Now's the time, apparently, because everybody's Call looking Vault. for it, right? Oh my gosh! If Vault post, if Vault published that comic, I'd cry. Honestly, I'd cry if anybody published it other than <laughs> the, the small press, like of ourselves. Um, but we've got um, some number ones in stock this week. Can I have some more wine before we talk about them? Of course. Thank you, sir. I'm very excited. So we got some number ones um, coming up first. That's probably good for now. Coming up first from Mad Cave. Excited to see another new number one from Mad Cave. We've got Nature's Labyrinth. Um, this is the story of a cast of characters who gets selected for various reasons um, to go on a cruise. And that cruise leaves them leads them, I should say, to an island, and uh, on that island, we get Survivor in the truest actual, if Survivor Survivor was real, sorry, spoiler alert, it uh, is real. it's definitely not, if Survivor was real, this would kind of be what it might look like, might have looked like, I guess it's, is it over now, I don't know. What? Survivor. No, so oh the, gosh, there's, so there's a season going on right now. Wow, that's, that's a thing. I mean, it, it's crazy because I will, I'll admit, I watch Survivor every year, every season. Um, I, I love it. I love the drama. I love the backstabbing manipulation. Um, and I love that it's totally real. It's 100% real. It's not staged in any way, shape, or form. It's so not, is wrestling. It's Wrestling's not on a set. Real. Well, no, they've admitted that wrestling is, is fake. It's uh, sports <laughs> entertainment now. It's wrestling. Um, but, uh, no, I, I, I do. And, uh, it seems like every year the numbers grow and it seems like now a lot of like parents who watch it with their kids are now like the kids are older and really into it as well. So, you know, it, as long as Jeff Probst stays alive, which I'm going to assume is forever. Um, cause that dude looks like he's hardly aged over the last 20, 30 years. Um, but, uh, yeah, and uh, so this is kind of like that a little bit, you know, somewhat like a battle royale minus mm-hmm. the battling where it's like, hey, we're... So far. Yes, yeah, thrust into kind this, of like... Game scene. Yeah, yeah, like, hey, you have X amount of time um, to, to win whatever this game is that you're playing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we kind of get, like, the very beginning of it. You have that, like, opening little where it's, like, here's all your characters and kind of, like, a brief. I love it because it's, like, their age and their pronouns and where they're from. Yeah. And then we get one or two interactions with them on the cruise ship before they even make it to the mm-hmm. island. So you can kind of see who they are. You know, you got your podcaster who, like, a, a waiter walks by and he's like, oh, if you want an autograph, you can just ask. And yeah. they're like, okay. <laughs> like, And you get the guy who's, like, overly aggressive for no reason and all the different people. And you kind of see how they play out. You get, But you get this one girl who's in her room telling herself who she is and what she's doing there and kind of rehearsing it and it makes you wonder like is 
there something? Like, is it weird? Is she, is it not real? Is she fake? Is she pretending to be somebody else? Like, did she murder somebody to get on this boat? Like, who is this person? What is she? And I love that you immediately question her. But also, can you show them the back? Because this is the guy in charge of this trip. And if there's ever been a drawing that could tell you you should not trust this person, like, this was a great uh, immediate look at this character. Where I was like, I don't trust you. No, that you're making all of the facial expressions that signify I should not trust you, and uh, you get that very instantly. And I kind of you've already you start to make your alliances uh, yourself mentally before you even land on the island, and then you're like, oh, now okay, who who am I rooting for? Yeah. Uh, also, the cover artist. I'm not. I was. I'm not even trying to pronounce that name. The cover artist on this is magnificent. Um, the pencil work on this. For a brief moment, I thought it was somebody that I like. How would you say that? Filia? Filia Bratsukin? Bratsukin? I don't know. That's, yeah. It's magnificent, though. It's magnificent. And honestly, the interior artist in general does a lot of uh, labyrinth work and mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, just randomly works into yeah. images. I think there's one. Let me see. Um, I think there was one specific one where they were standing on something. Like, even there it is. Even yeah. the carpet is is a maze, uh, if you can see that closely. Like, even the carpet's kind of like the labyrinth maze. And it's just, it's incredible, the work that they're doing to kind of make that signify throughout the whole story. Um, and I cannot wait to see where this goes. But, yeah, this actually, the uh, cover art reminds me of Bermuda. Yeah. Which was yeah. phenomenal. Um, but this is, I, I would pick this up. This yeah. was a great first issue. This was kind of one of those where, like, I almost was like, this is a pick of the week. Um, for me, this is, like, one of those, it didn't quite make it, but. But I can't tell you why it didn't yeah. make it. Like, I'm like, it was really, really good. It could have been a pick of the week. I can't really say why it's not. It's that good. Like, yeah. definitely, definitely grab it. That's issue one. It's obviously, like, that's your starting point. Jump in now because it is going to be one of those books where by the time two and three come around, enough people are probably going to have jumped on it that it's going to be impossible to find issue one because it's going to have been under-ordered. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, from Source Point Press, we have issue one of The Argus. Uh, tell them about it, Phil, because you love your time travel stories. I, I do. It, I get sucked in every time. <laughs> uh, this is the story. Uh, imagine the guy who created time travel uh, eventually, over time, <laughs> forms uh, a police. He, he decides to eventually police uh, time travel uh, with a bunch of versions of himself. And instead of it being like alternate universe versions... Uh, each uh, member of the police force is um, a version of him from a different year. Mm -hmm. So it's like as he gets older, um, they recruit it. And, like, of course, the main guy looks just like Cable. Yeah, yeah, um, he does. Like, he just almost identical. Like, I was like, is this Cable? Um, and so, yeah, it's basically uh, the uh, a group of him show up and are like, hey, uh, shit's kind of hit the fan and, and we need you. And this issue is telling you the who, the what, the when, the where, the why. I mean, this is literally like the guy asks a question. And they tell you. And they give you the full rundown of like what this is and why it's happening. And essentially you find out that uh, one of the versions of him uh, has gone rogue and is now bad and trying yeah. to kill all the other versions of him. And... Uh, He's the one. He's the one version yeah. of himself that can solve the problem and potentially save the day. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, one of those, the the time stream is being messed up and it's your fault, but it's all of our faults. And um, it's, it's interesting uh, because, you know, you kind of have a, a, the funny jokes of like, um, I, there's like one point where he's like, all oh, those times I could have spent talking to girls and being an athlete. And the guy was like, I'm you. Like, you can't lie to me. We were bad at sports and girls never liked us. Like, <laughs> right. No girl wanted to talk yeah, to us. Yeah, no girl wanted to talk to us. Um, and so, yeah, you kind of get the kicking off of this. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing what's at stake here. And um, 
I'm down for it. Yeah. And Source Point, so it's good. It's like, I like the art. I like the way, I like the little twist that they do to the fact that this is a story that we've talked about. It's a story you hear. And they do these little kind of like add ins or changes to what you think it's going to be. Um, that a lot of it still plays out in that traditional time time story, but you do get these little moments where you're like, ooh, I like how you did that. Mm-hmm. Good job. You know, like I've seen. 30,000 superhero movies, but every time there's a slight, like, ooh, I like how you use that differently in this movie, this was definitely one of those where it's like, I know the time travel story, I know where we're going with this, and then it's like, oh, nice use of that for, nice change up. Yeah, I, for the most part, feel like I know where this is going. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're going to get a lot of those tropes um, that you would expect from a time travel book. But Um, we're going to do it well. Yeah. Yeah, I think this could be this could be worthwhile, and, and I like the villain version of himself. Yeah. You know, and a lot of the times, uh, I'm the kind of person that if the story's mediocre but the villain's really cool... Absolutely. Then I'm usually a, a bit more inclined to uh, to check it out. And so the villain, especially in this, is pretty interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We talk about that in our workshops, um, for our common creation workshops, like if you your villain is really important because they need to be believable and relatable. And I like that in this, the villain being just yourself. Yeah. Uh, and we don't know his motivation still, which mm-hmm. I like that it's like, oh, well, I know I'm fighting myself at some point, but I don't know why this one me... Like, we know why we maybe, but we don't really know. Like, we know the how, but we don't really know the full why yet. Yeah, and I yeah. love that that's going to be part of the unfolding in this story. Yeah. Yeah. Good story. I've always wanted to meet the villainous version of myself. Yeah. Like, what kind of villain would he be? What if you met all the other versions of yourself and none of them were the villain and that made you realize that you were the villain? You know, own. sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, am I the villain of this story? You know. But then mm-hmm. whose villain am I? Because I'm not my own. Well, I could be my own villain. You could be your own villain. Some, you like, could be weird lots existential. of people. Yeah. Yeah, you but I, I, I feel like I need to have like a set nemesis. Oh, you gotta have You know, set like I need to find somebody who's pure at heart and just ruin their day. Well, just their are day. Are you my villain? Shannon, I hate to break this to you, but I don't know if you're pure at heart. <laughs> you may think you are. I definitely don't. <laughs> but I mean, if you if you're looking for a, a nemesis, I just feel like you already have a lot of stress on your plate, and me just adding more to that would just, you know. I mean, if you're the worst villain in my life, that would be a great life because you're not nearly terrible. Well, I mean, we haven't established that I'm the villain of your story. I'm saying if you were, it'd be fine because you're not terrible. You'd be an easy villain to deal with. He thinks Survivor's real. He does. That, that... Does that make me uh, 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 like I'm not? Like it's I'm... villainous behavior. I don't know that it's villainous behavior. <laughs> Maybe you're Matt's villain. <laughs> Honestly, you know what? truthfully, that's actually more accurate. You are the nemesis to Matt. That is probably a true story. Mm-hmm. But I don't mean to be. No, but y'all both like the same thing, but have 100% opposite opinions on it. So you really are the antithesis of Matt. And it's kind of funny. It's great. What if y'all are? Or maybe Matt's your villain. I don't know. We don't, we don't know who the good guy is. I mean, everybody's the good guy of their own story, right? So... The the thing is though is between the two of us, Matt's got more of those villain tendencies, you know, where he's very passionate about like how the world works oh. and revolutions. So, <laughs> you know, I feel like he would be the Joker to my Batman. No, he's like a Doctor Doom. Yeah, he would definitely be. If we we're gonna put Matt in as a villain, he would definitely be more of a Doctor Doom. Does that a... make me Reed Richards? No, let's not get crazy. You do have well, some no. pepper hair. Yeah, but I'm not intelligent. You know, maybe it's... it's. I'm all four of them mixed together. I'm um, all four, four of the Fantastic Four. Yeah. I'm a little bit of each of them. I believe that. I believe that. I'm down. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, we'll work on whose villain <laughs> Phil is as we go on. Uh, but speaking of villains, uh, Brian Michael Bendis has a new book out called The One. What? It's all about defeating... Uh, a baby villain. 
Oh, I thought you were saying that Brian Michael Bendis well, Brian is a Michael villain. villain. Brian, Brian, Michael, Brian Michael Bendis is a villain. Uh, this is issue one from Dark Horse Comics. And basically, we see people who are the chosen one in different fields and different aspects of uh, fantasy worlds in our world. Uh, we kind of see their lives and how they've played out. I love the guy in the grocery store who everybody's freaking out. Like, aren't you the one? And he's like, no. And they're like, nah, dude, you're the chosen one. Like, kind of has the Harry Potter thing where he stopped the bad guy when he was a baby. He's like, look, I don't remember that. And they're like, oh, man, even chosen ones don't remember when they were a baby. Like, and he's like, I, I just really want to buy my groceries. Like, I don't want to stop talking to me, please. Um, and he's kind of got that anxiety of like, I did a thing and I didn't mean to and leave me alone. And then you get the girl who's like, oh, I'm the chosen one. I'm the slayer. Essentially, I have to slay all these monsters. And you get all these different people and they are brought together by one man who tells them, hey, you've got one. It turns out uh, the Antichrist is going to be born. Uh, evil incarnate is going to is being born as a baby. And uh, you guys have to go do it. And they're like, whoa, whoa, we're not baby killers. And the one girl's like, I mean, if it's evil, <laughs> like maybe we should. Yeah. And they're like, no, 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 we can't. We're not going to kill a baby. Let's just wait and see how it plays out. And uh, it plays out, and we see how it plays out, and that's kind of our setup for this story. Yeah. Um, this is the most Bindisfeek, Bindisfeek book I've ever seen in the modern time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this feels like something I've read from Bindis before. Like, yeah. I feel like this is a Bindis story he's already told, but he's retelling it again just with new characters. And I, I was reading through this, and I was like, you know what? I don't think I care. And then they introduced Wilson. And you were in. And then I was like, okay, if, if Wilson is a prominent player in this story, I'm fully on board. I'm, I'm in. You're in. Because uh, he's great. You know, he's like the, he's the one that has to bring everyone together. And his whole purpose is like, hey, I'm going to tell you what, what y'all's purpose is. And then make sure you guys don't screw it up. I'm in for the sidekick who's like, no, it's fine. We'll just see how it plays out. <laughs> it's just great. Um, I, did, I could not stop laughing, though, uh, reading the dialogue because of that issue of crossover mm. where they're in the, the, the prison and she's like, oh, are we going to do this now? And it's the powers team. And they're like, do what? And she's like, you know, the Bendis thing. And they're like, what Bendis thing? And she's like, you know. And then they start finishing every, like finishing each other's sentences and it's like the page fills up with like 13 bubbles each and she's like yeah that one that's the thing and I'm like the whole time I was cracking up I was like man Donnie nailed that when he did that and then of course Bendis came in and wrote on that issue but I was like man this was this was flawless and I remember after reading that issue of Crossover I went to Donnie and I was like dude you nailed Brian so hard it's perfect and he was like I edited that man for so many years like as his as you know the intern and every time I was just like why are there so many speech bubbles <laughs> and he, I felt it uh, reading this I was like oh here we are we're back to Bendis but you still get that fun and excitement that a Bendis story gives you and you always have this weird random character that comes in and now you got him in Wilson yeah it's Cur a Bendis book curious know? to see how it plays out it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun adventure but yeah Dark Horse is the new home of Brian Michael Bendis so I'm sure we'll see uh, some some more stories coming out from him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right. Up next, last of our number ones that aren't in the picks of the week. Uh, from a great, speaking of great creative teams, this is uh, Charles Sewell. And um, we've got Michelle Rosenberg on uh, colors, who I think did a great job with the coloring. But this nice. is uh, Hell to Pay issue one. And this is going to be a huge thing. Uh and I mean a massive universe. This is the Shrouded College. It's a uh, Image Comics. Uh, sorry, I totally forgot to tell you that. But um, it is going to be kind of almost a Charles Sewell imprint just for this universe at uh, Image. Oh, because really? it is going to be uh, the Shrouded College, which is basically, to tell you the story, is basically a place that you can be recruited by them and be trained by them but then you are forever in their debt they get to make up what their debt is and you're never going to get out from underneath that debt no matter what you do just like actual college um except this is all supernatural related and this first story follows a couple 
who uh, Maya and Sebastian, who were told that the, the college would help them, it would save their lives, it would get them on their feet, it would help them establish everything they needed for their future. Um, and then they were given their task that they had to do to pay back the college, which was to find all of these like cursed demonic coins. Like this money came up from hell and has been put out into the world and basically anybody who has one of these coins can call forth a demon. They've been told they could do it. They're on what is supposed to be their last mission and come to find out, not gonna be the case. Uh, this hell to pay is specifically Maya and Sebastian's story, but what Charles tells us at the end of the book is that we are actually getting a Shrouded College universe, and there is going to be seven stories that are all six-issue series. So we are getting a lot of this world. Um, that's why I'm like, it's basically almost an imprint at that point because you're going to have seven books on it at some point. Um, I don't know if they're all going to run at the same time, but this is the first of a massive universe building coming from Charles Sewell, which I'm really excited to see. I think I, I think Charles Sewell is one of the most solid writers. Everything he does is always just really, really good. He's good at world building. He's great at telling us these great stories. I'm excited to see what he does with this um, because it is it's an interesting way to talk about the fact that college and debts uh people and kind of you never can get out of it and when you think you're on your last payment you uh end up finding out that in fact you haven't actually paid anything and you're starting over at the beginning um and i love i love the way he's using that with like actual demons and stuff i don't know if did you guys read it uh i did i feel like you covered everything you know. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I'm, I was totally down for that. I didn't know this was going to be a whole universe thing. Yeah, I'm always interested when Charles writes a letter at the back because I feel like he's not one of the people who writes the long letter at the back of the issue telling you all the stuff. And so the fact that he did with this one, um, you know, we talked about Eight Billion Genies kind of being the book that everybody was going to start paying attention to what Charles Sewell had coming next. And uh, if you haven't been paying attention to that yet uh eight billion genius is on like fourth and fifth prints of every issue at this point so you definitely should be paying attention to eight billion genies but this is your what comes next moment and uh building out a giant universe in a whole new world is definitely a great follow-up for eight billion genies yeah yeah and now you get to see charles soul world build oh yes because with eight billion genies we were in the one bar now we're yeah. now we're going somewhere big um, all right, we got some picks of the week. I'm going to let you kick it off with something we didn't know we uh, were waiting on. I did, but you didn't. I, I didn't know this was even coming down the line, but this is uh, the, purple, the Purple Oblivion, number one. Uh, this is from the creative team that also brought you Heavy Metal Drummer, which uh, was a pick of the week and Every also time. just one of the craziest fucking books I've ever read. <laughs> Um, and they kind of pick up where that left off in a weird way. Mm -hmm. um, and they, this is Sumerian. Yes, this is Sumerian. Uh, they got the nice, like, s uh, this is smaller than a normal issue. It is. Um, but, it's the Sumerian size, honestly. It's, yeah. It seems to be their, their comic size. For the most but, uh, and you get an issue that kicks off this great first two pages of a dude's head exploding. Um, so this is the story of drugs. Yeah. And the production of drugs. Mm -hmm. um, and the crazy dark world that is surrounded by it. Um, you kind of have, um, you get to see a little bit of the production of this new drug. That's kind of like green and looks like it's been created by from slugs. Uh, and you're introduced to a woman named Jessica Knott who is a dominatrix who also sells these drugs um, out on the streets. And there's a possibility that these drugs could have a higher purpose. Yes. But we don't know. We don't. All you need to know is that the art in this book is fantastic. The colors, everything about this book is just beautiful. Um, I opened it up to the, those first two pages and was like, oh, this is a pick of the week. I don't even care what this book's about. This is the pick of the week. Easily. Easily. 
I knew what your picks were this week because I ordered them. When I ordered them, I was like, I'm ordering Phil's picks that week, whatever that week is. Well, there's there was one that this, you... This one and the other one, I 100% knew. Yeah, I mean, they announced the other one. And I knew it was your pick of the week. There was no doubt it was going to be your pick But the this, week. for me, was the same, because when I did the order for this, I saw that it was the creative team. It said, creative team with heavy metal jumper, and I was like, oh, this book will always be a pick of the week. They do have one other one that's going to come out from them, too, and I Sweet. cannot remember the name, but I just ordered that and was like, oh, here we go again. Uh, but yeah, this is... It's crazy, it's weird, and like Phil said, you're really here for the art just being out there the whole time. This book is also, at some point, there's one other, I think it's two pages. Yeah, this is all on the show. This and maybe the next page as well as the other one. Um, but yeah, this is one of those ones where like things are going to get really crazy, you're going to have a lot of questions, but the ride itself is going to be a wonderful time. Absolutely. Um, you may not know where you're going, uh, but the journey, yeah, look at that two-page spread. That's cool looking. That's like, uh, that's like original art I want on my wall. But the, like, like, give me a giant poster of that <laughs> so I can put it on my wall. And then my parents come over like, what is this? I'm like, it's drugs. Is it going to be a black light <laughs> poster? Yes. <laughs> Maybe yeah. velvet even? Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, this is one you got to pick up. Look, I, I know we talk about all these picks of the week. But in terms of, like, a legitimate Wednesday fill pick, this is, this is that one. Most of your big picks this week follows the classic Wednesday fill. Yes. I just want to say, I'm just going to show this. This was not in our pile, and it was supposed to be for the, uh, good God, uh, books that came out this week. But since you just talked about double-page spreads and we're just kind of bragging about double-page spreads, I sent this one to you earlier. This is from Nomad. The Unconquerable, this is issue five, which is Battle Quest Comics' first title. And I talk about a group of people who are showing off on their way out the door. Um, this is such a cool double page spread that they've got um, in this story. This is all about a man who um, he was trying to defend his family. I'm going to show you. He's going to try to defend his family. Uh, he's like the king. It's kind of one of those like 300 where the king has to go out and do this defense of something. And uh, he ends up in this battle with a woman. And we kind of figure out who he is. And this goes from a fantasy kind of book to a little bit of a sci-fi book. But honestly and truthfully, I'm just these double page spreads um, and this stuff. I This isn't technically a pick of the week. I just really needed to show it. Um, before I went on some more picks of the week because I had to run out there and grab it because um, it was supposed to be in our books that came out this week. And I, for some reason, I, the book must have gotten put in the other stack. But I just wanted to show off their art really quick because I think that um, Battle Quest Comics, with this being their first book, this is definitely just an all-star way to kick off your first your first book. Yeah. Um, and we're five issues into this. I love the blue and gray tone um, instead of black and white. It fits so well with the story. And the story just gets really, it gets really, really beautiful between um, a husband and a wife and a husband who's, a, a king who's just trying to save his people. But they just show off with those double page oh, spreads yeah. and that yeah. paneling. And I just, I wanted to throw that in there because if we're going to get to the in stocks and I'm going to be like, oh, I don't have time to show it to you. So I wanted to show it to you before we went too far. Uh, back to Picks of the Week. Uh, from Boom Studios, we have issue one of Behold Behemoth, which is actually written by the guy who wrote House of Slaughter, volume one. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, and so this is Behold Behemoth, and this is incredible. I've actually had conversations about this book online already this week. Um, this is one of those where I had a couple people asking for it in advance and then people mess like people, I asked people what their favorite book was this week on my Instagram. And I actually had people like, did you read Behold Behemoth? Uh, hands down. That's the book. Um, it's the story of a man who we, we started out with him as a young boy with his brother and they're in foster care. And they're talking about how, you know, the older brother is like, look, I'm, we're always going to be together. Like, things are going to get bad, but at least you have me. Uh, and we're here. And then, of course, we come to the now, and he, the younger brother is burying his brother. 
and he doesn't actually have him and they've been separated for years and what the younger brother has become a social worker the older brother was a cop and uh, they ended up you know, living these two separate lives where neither talk to each other or about each other. Um, and we follow this younger brother who is now a social worker. And we see him go investigate some cases. We see him at the funeral. We see him doing other things. And uh, every once in a while, he stares off into space and or gets sweaty. And we see possibly the end of the world through his eyes. Uh, we see death and destruction and a lot of other things coming possibly to fruition. Um, and then uh, who knows? I, that's, that's pretty much what we know Yeah. without spoiling anything. We really don't have much to spoil, honestly. Yeah. But what you need to know is that there's possibly something coming. Possibly. I do love his line of, do you ever feel like the world is coming to an end all at once, and rapidly and all at once? And the police officer who was the brother's partner says, "If yes, the world is coming to an end, but if you think it's happening all at once, you haven't been paying attention. And yeah. I love that as an opening line, really, to the story. Cool. Um, because there is definitely something coming, and you feel like, Oh, where, where did this come from? And you feel that. You feel it as you're reading it. Like, where did the, whoa, what just happened? Where is this coming from? Um, but yet you also can see how this is something that was probably in the works for a long time. Yeah. And this was a pick of the week for me because I do, one, I think the art is magnificent on this. Um, and I like this kind of what's reality, what's not, what's going on. I mean, it's just. This, to me, is really good storytelling. If you want to talk about a book that, within the first five pages, completely roped me into everything yeah. that's going on, I was like, yeah, this this is going to be one of those where, by the end, you're going to be like, holy shit, that was just a really good story. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to what's coming. Honestly, I read this on Wednesday and again today. Because I was really? like, oh, man, I read that on Wednesday, and I talked about it with people online, and hearing how excited, I was excited about it on Wednesday, but then talking about people, talking about it with people in the store all week, talking about it online with people, I was like, I want to read it again, because I don't want to miss it. This is one of those where I know some small little detail is going to come into play, and I don't want to miss any of the details, so I went back and reread it, and I was like, that was actually better the second time. Like, knowing, it's not, it's one of those where, like, even knowing what we're building towards in the first issue, I went back and read it and was like, this is great. Yeah. This is going to be a good book. Yeah, I'm I'm in love with this book. Um, it was not hard for me to realize it was going to be a pick of the week. Yeah. Very easily. Um, so, yeah, get on this. I think this is going to be one of those, um, one of those boom titles that, if you're not on it now, you're going to regret later on not having jumped on on issue one. Kind of like Grimm. You know, I feel like when Grimm came on, that was one of those books, like, everyone was like, you got to read Grimm, you got to read Grimm. And then, you know, people falling behind to, like, issue four. I think Grimm's at five now, right? Yeah. Um, and people just being like, oh, I really wish I would have picked that up when issue one came out. Also, Grimm has those Jenny Frizen covers. Jenny Frizen covers, but, uh, I know. You know, also, if you want to give Jenny Frizen some... A whole behemoth cover or something. The cover yeah. actually looks like it could be done by the Once in Future artist. I yeah. don't know that it is, but it has that same color palette that they use. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very, very beautiful. Um, a very obvious, this is what we were talking about, <laughs> choice for Wednesday Phil. The most obvious Wednesday Phil choice of all time is Click Stops, number one, from Dark Horse Secret Stash Imprint. Yes. Go ahead. I'm not even talking. Uh, I mean, look. I, there's times where I sit around and trying to figure out like what is the number one fandom that I live by and I think it's without a doubt Kevin Smith's View Askew Universe. Um, I love all his movies. I love all the characters, the inside jokes. I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, stoner humor for adults. Um, and this is basically going to be an anthology series, a bunch of short stories um, that are tied into his universe and this issue is basically the origin story 
uh, of Blunt Man and Chronic, how Holden McNeil um, and, and Brody came to have created the two characters. Um, and this is basically Holden McNeil, who's the Ben Affleck character, um, telling the story to a fan at um, Chronic Con, um, which is basically their version of Comic Con. Um, and it's really great because there's even like the fan who comes up is from Jersey and there's all these Jersey. They talk about how great Jersey is. Um, and you get the like the tell them Steve Dave uh, references are in there. But I mean, this is basically Kevin Smith's one thing that he's really good at is fan service for fans of all of his movies. This gives you all of it. It ties all of it into it. Um, and it's really great because they actually tie this into the movie universe. Um, if you've seen all the movies, I'm not going to give it away. Um, they mention the movies. Um, there's references to Jane and Silent Bob Strikes Back um, in this as well. But it's just really great. I mean, you get everything that you expect. I can't show that page. Um, you get everything that you would want from kevin smith it's written in kevin smith's voice i mean it cracks jokes they even make like the kevin james joke um that they make in the movies because for some weird reason i guess kevin smith thinks that a lot of people mix him and kevin james up for some reason which i i don't really understand that but i think it was just kind of a, a funny joke that came about in the movies um but if you're a kevin smith fan if you like uh all those movies uh if you saw the reboot um, then this is definitely one that you're going to want to check out as well because it's just wonderful. I have to order more copies. The shelf copies sold out this week. Did they really? Mm-hmm. Yours are in your box, don't worry. I want to know who ordered those. Yeah. The other Kevin Smith fans out there because, um, you would be talk. friends. Yeah. Let's yeah. hang out. If you picked up, if you're in Bradenton and you picked up this book off our shelf this week, Wednesday Phil wants to be your friend. I do. Yeah. I want to hang out with you because you have good taste. <laughs> you have great taste. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get some more. This copy is for the shelf, but I'm going to see if I can get some more uh, in because we obviously want to have some before issue two comes out. This and Creep Show are the two books I can't, I like, both sell out. Let's keep selling this out. I yep. want Dark Horse to realize that Kevin Smith's this thing they've been missing. It's just more Kevin Smith. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. It's I'm this is like the golden age for me <laughs> of fandom. I'm getting I get I got a fine I got the Clerks three. Um and now I'm getting all these comic books. And it sounds like it's kind of making Kevin Smith feel like he needs to get out there and do more. So uh, let's keep it going. Yeah. I just want Kevin Smith all day. All day, every day. Well, if you want Kevin Smith all day, every day, I want Muppets all day, every day. <laughs> uh, my ultimate fandom is Muppets. Uh, this Wait, is... Muppets or Sesame Street? I do love Sesame Street. Huh? Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz is my ultimate fandom. It's true. But if Phil's going to say... are there puppets in Wizard of Oz? No. 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 The monkeys? No. No. Those, those weren't puppets? Guys. Those people in costume. What? Oh, I guess they're pretty large, huh? Yeah. They're like people... Standing like, like down. Yeah. yeah. Did it's they just reuse the lollipop guild? Or is it like I mean, full-sized adults? I don't know. I, mean, I haven't question. seen Wizard of Oz in they a are long time. They are humans in costume, though. Anyway, um, I was just making a reference to the fact that Lucilla was saying that that was the ultimate fandom moment. To me, watching these Sesame Street characters uh, come to life in Survival Street uh, was definitely wonderful. This is issue four, um, also Dark Horse. Um, this is issue four and the final issue of Survival Street. This is the story um, of felt Americans, as these Muppets prefer to be called. Uh, this is the story of them taking over, uh, taking back America after America becomes overrun by capitalism to the point where corporations get a vote and become president, become governors and senators and everything. And uh, they shut down Sesame Street, uh, whatever it's actually called in this, because they can't have them teaching kids to be nice to each other instead of um, being capitalist. And so these Muppets gang, gang, well, group up 
and decide to go out uh, and fight the powers that be and start a revolution. And this has been a four-part series that's followed those Muppets along their journey. You get, uh, you kind of get to see a little bit of all the ones that you expect. Like there's a Super Grover kind of character. There's an Oscar the Grouch kind of character. We had Milo, who was supposed to be Elmo. Um, we have Birdie. We have the, the giant hippo. Honestly, this issue specifically definitely like took it up even more um, than any of the other ones. And I this is that issue where I was sitting there reading parts of it to Matt because I was like, oh my god, I have to I have to tell you this, but there's this great scene in there where they literally are like, here's the thing, you know, you're coming and you're trying to attack us because this is our ultimate battle between, you know, the good guys and the bad guys. And they're like, you're coming here trying to attack us, but what you forget is that we're edutainers. And our job is to teach people who need to know things a lesson. And we do it, like, in an entertaining way. And they just, like, start, like, attacking back. And I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. Like, when do edutainers and Muppets ever get to be, like, the badasses? Like, I love this so much. And the whole thing takes place in, like, an abandoned amusement park. Like, they literally just took all of the things I love and put them in one comic. And they were like, here you go. Like, edutainers and Muppets taking down capitalism in an abandoned band and music park how could you do any better than that you can't um uh but you can because then you get this really great speech at the end um from one of the muppets about like the whole point so you still get your lesson as you always do at the end of sesame street um child shannon uh and her obsession with Sesame Street and the Muppet Show grew up to read Survival Street and think, yes, this is exactly where we were headed. I love this. Um, so great job, Dark Horse, uh, for create and and you know James Asmus and the team for just a great book. And if they want to make more, like we continue on with the story of the Salutation Street uh, people surviving out in the world, I'm here for it. Yeah. Please. This needs a volume two. Mm -hmm. It definitely does. And mm -hmm. a hardcover, Dark Horse. Hey. Or uh, do it with um, like a furry hardcover. Actually, what I would want is this is, so this is the old Muppet Show thing. Um, and I think it would be really cool is if when you slid it out, like the book was the orange and blue and these were like cut out, mm, or the orange and yellow and this is like I cut see. out. It's like die cut? Yeah, it was like a die cut mm. slip cover would be super cool. Okay. Just saying. I'm not in charge of production at Dark Horse, but this is the one time where I'm like, yeah, hardcover. Let's do it. Let's do a hardcover. All four issues were pick of the week as well. All four so issues. You know. Survival Street in general, pick of the week. Um, all right, we got some in stacks. We're going to blow through these really fast. Speaking of time travel, we've got Time Before Time, issue 18. Um, also Crazy this time. is still going. I know. This is if you corporatized uh, um, time travel, which we will definitely do someday. Um, we've got, from Uncivilized Comics, we've got Career Sharp Shoplifter from Gabrielle Bell. This is uh, little vignettes basically about life and all of the choices we make. Uh, from Sumerian Comics, we've got Never Ender Issue 6, a bunch of teenagers in space having a battle for their freedom. Uh, Punisher Issue 7. Yeah, catch up on Punisher. I know, he's got swords now. I know. Uh, from Mad Cave, we've got Issue 5 of Potions, Inc., about a family who's trying to save their magic business. Uh, Issue 6 of Poison Ivy from G. Willow Wilson. It was Issue 5 that had the great double page spread that looks like Janet Paquette art. Uh, but the art and the story in this has been great. Uh, issue 7 of Savage Avengers. It looks like we went 2099 with the Savage Avengers in this issue. Uh, Secret Invasion. We've got a new story going on with that. And this is issue 1 with this great Scotty Young cover. Uh, I love this uh, Jen Bartel cover of the new champion nice. of Shazam. Uh, issue 3 with Mary Shazam on the cover. Can we just keep calling her Mary Marvel? Look, don't sue us, Marvel. Mary Marvel sounds way cooler than Mary Shazam. Uh, issue seven of She Hulk from Rainbow Rowell and these Jen Bartel gorgeous covers. Uh, Sword of Azrael, issue four of six. Um, Transformers Shattered Glass, volume two, issue three. X Men Red, issue eight, with this badass storm cover. Um, Tiger Division, issue one from Marvel, um, with this Momoko cover. I uh, love that. Star Wars, uh, issue, I almost said episode 29, issue 29. 
Um, we've got Hulk issue 10 from Donny Cates and Ryan Otley, and I believe they're like co-writing it at this on this book okay. on this story, so it's super cool. I think the la- like this little part of the story arc has been co-written by both, so I'm kind of if you're a fan of Ryan Otley, you can kind of see like him him work on that story too. Uh, issue 43 of Captain Marvel, and it says the brood is back. Just saying. Uh, speaking of people being back, Deadpool is back with issue one, and who was writing it this time around? Um, Allison Wong or Alyssa Wong, Alyssa Wong. Oh. So another female writer on Deadpool, which is how I like it. Uh, Avengers Forever issue ten. Batman one twenty nine. Chip Zdarsky's Batman story going on. We got Black Panther issue eleven. Um, which I've heard this has been just an absolutely great Black Panther series. Uh, Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo. This is Mark Silvestri uh, writing Ooh. a Batman story. Um, Cross-Gen Tales. This is a Marvel Tales for Cross-Gen. There are four stories in here from like the early 2000s Cross-Gen stories. Um, Joker, Man Who Stop- Stopped Laughing, which is Matthew Rosenberg, and we've got some Frank Villa in there. Nice. Uh, I had to bring this, and this is just a variant, so I don't know if you know, but for the next couple of months, Marvel and DC are both bringing back the 90s, um, not only in their stories with the fact that, like, Wildcats and all Wild Storm, like, there's a Wild Storm 30th anniversary. I'm honestly wondering if we're building towards, like, a Jim Lee retirement celebration at DC or something, because we're oh, bringing back all this cool. stuff. I'd be down for that. I feel like Jim Lee deserves a vacation. Yeah. Um, but I, we, we would all, you know, be remiss for losing Jim Lee, but I think he definitely has worked his ass off forever. So if we were working towards that, but... We are just honoring the 90s in general at Batman, at uh, Batman, at DC. I mean, let's be honest, that's true. Uh, at DC and I mean, Marvel. It's de- Detective Comics. It's Detective Comics. Oh, I mean, it's, but at DC and Marvel, we're honoring the 90s. And one of the things they brought back is foil and boss covers. Um, and so this is the Batman one. There was a Joker one. I'm out of it. Don't ask me for it. I, I mean, unless I can see if I can still order it's a it. Cover. They are, and they're. It's so funny because they're they're just bringing back all those '90s homage. What I love is that DC is actually going to be making fun of it. So all the '90s homage, like regular covers from DC, like you know how Superman had the mullet in the '90s, and it was always blowing in the wind. Chip Zdarsky has a cover, and it shows. It's like one of those where Superman's looking off to the side, and his hair is blowing. But if you look, he's holding a, a blow dryer and his face and his hair are blowing. It's going to be great. There, oh, cool. There's one where like Batman and Superman's capes are flying in their face. Like it's just everybody's it, it's all about making fun of how ridiculous the 90s were at DC and then Marvel has like brought back Rob Liefeld to make extreme variants and they're actually calling them extreme. Um, you know. Uh, Monkey Prince issue 9 is out. Uh, I'm really excited because we are seeing a new event coming up from DC that's on your December solicits for Um, are your November solicits for like a January release and it is already talking about how monkey the monkey prince is going to be the key to the DC universe and I'm very excited to see monkey prince getting used so well that's a series we loved when it started Uh, I'd love to see genuine Lang uh, genuine Luin Yang getting more uh, getting to create this character and then see that character take over a lot a large chunk of DC storytelling so it's gonna be great um, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. This is issue one out this week. Uh, Predator issue four, and I love this. Did you see the Sakai variant? Ooh. <laughs> I knew you would love that. Dan Sakai doing a Predator. That's cool. I'd like to see more covers from him. Yes. Uh, Disturbed Dark Messiah issue five. So I believe that's the wrap up of the Disturbed comic. Um, Star Trek issue one. This is a new Star Trek title coming out. Um, might have actually been last week, but I put it back up on the wall and because I don't think I brought it out last week on the live stream. Uh, I think this week was uh, Picard was actually the Star Trek title that came out this week. Star Trek Picard issue three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Damage Control issue three out. We have some facsimiles in stock I want to talk about. If you don't know what a facsimile is, it's a, a reprinting of the original comic with like the same ads and everything. Uh, so it's really cool. Marvel does them. DC does them. Uh, kind of just gives you a chance to grab some of those books that you normally wouldn't get to see uh, for a reasonable amount of money. 
So uh, up first is Tomb of Dracula, number one facsimile. Uh, don't freak out if you're watching. I'm going to keep saying facts only after all of these so you don't think that I have them in stock. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man number annual number one uh, facts only. However, I do actually have this book in stock. I do have an Amazing Spider-Man annual number one on the wall if you are looking for it. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number one facts only. Um, Superman number one facts only. Uh, and the first appearance of Superman in Action Comics number one, facsimile. Uh, we've got a Detective Comics 27 facsimile and a Marvel Family Comics number one facsimile. If you, what? First Black Adam. First Black Adam. So if you're like, hey, I just saw the Black Adam movie and I loved it because you probably did if you saw it, uh, cause that movie was freaking fantastic. Uh, this is me on the internet telling you not to listen to the internet, but also go see Black Adam. Well, I mean, if you notice, and I think enough of us as comic book fans and movie fans are smart enough to realize that the the tom- the Rotten Tomatoes critic reviews are usually wrong. And Focus on what the audience is saying. And you're telling me that? And I'm telling you, as somebody who listens to people come in all day and all night talking about comic books, the average comic book fan is still actually saying, well, I heard on the internet it was trash, so I never saw it. But the audience rating is yeah. is like 92 or 93. Yeah. Go so, see it. Go, yeah, go watch the movie. It. Don't it's listen to awesome. the internet. Don't listen to people telling you I heard it was bad. It is so amazing. You should go see that movie. And also, just so you know, this was like a passion project for The Rock. Yeah, so if you're a fan of The Rock, you should definitely see it. Honestly, like, they wrote this movie around what The Rock's strengths were. Yeah. So it it did a really... He he did great in it. Badass. The story is phenomenal. Uh, I don't want to tell you what the story is about because I want you to go see it and have your mind blown by how great this, like, storytelling was. I loved Um, it. Me too. It was great, the three of us have never agreed on whether or not a movie was good, and all three of us are sitting in here talking about how good this movie is. So that should Wait, tell you. Wait, like in the D- the new DCEU? Yeah. You put this above Man of Steel? He yes. does. Really? Matt is putting put it, it above, above Batman vs. Superman. Matt and Matt well, loves the, the non theatrical version. Yeah, the extended, yeah, the extended version version's is Matt's much better, favorite much superhero better. movie, and yeah. he's putting this above it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess I would. I would. I, yeah, I guess I would agree with that. Cause I'm trying to think of what would. Right. If you want to see it again? I want to go see it again. Yeah, we're like, we'll all go see it again. Come. Yeah, if you're in Bradenton. And you want to see Black Adam, Adam, and you need buddies? Hit us up. We'll <laughs> see it five more times. We loved it. I um, love Super Dope. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, that was our news. So the show's over. That's all you need to know. No. Um. Actually, I just wanted to bring up this since I'm wearing the shirt. We do still have the VHS secret variant for King Jira in stock from Marco Fontanelli and Scout Comics. If you never read it, um, I may have regular issues. I don't think I do. I'm going to have to order more from Scout. Maybe one or two at most. But I don't have any in my drawers, so I'd have to actually go look them up. Uh, look and oh, see if I can find no. them. Then no, if I don't. If they're not in the, this, these they're back stock drawers, then, we then I don't have any more. So uh, I have this VHS variant. Um, which is amazing, and hopefully Scout can get me more copies of this, the thing. And also in stock, uh, today's November 6th, which means yesterday you should have obviously remembered that it was the 5th of November. And um, you should definitely read one of the greatest comic books ever written, uh, V for Vendetta. This is a, a phenomenal story about standing up the government should be afraid of its people and the people should not be afraid of its government if you need a one sentence line from this book that is a reminder what it's about this is uh alan moore dave lloyd just it's a great great book and this is actually the case that comes with the book and the mask and it is i think like 30 dollars. yeah and you get the mask and the book um which is super cool because the book alone is already like 25 dollars. so um, super cool way to do it. Uh, if you have never read V for Vendetta, you should. If you've never read V for Vendetta and you've only seen the movie, you're you didn't you don't you haven't V for Vendetta yet. Read the book. The book and the movie. It's that the movie's not even the cliff notes. It didn't even scratch the surface of what's in this book. So grab this book. Get it. Get this copy. Get the mask. 
Um, and, and then wear the mask while you read the book. And wear the mask while you read the book. Well, once you read it, you want you want to wear the mask. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have those in stock if you want if you want to grab one. Um, other trades that we have in stock: Volume Ten of Saga, which is the new volume. Um, if you didn't know, Saga came back this year, and it has been back long enough to already have a trade paperback, um, which is great. Thanks for putting that out so quickly. Uh, this is Volume Ten of Saga. Um, Bloodstained Teeth. What? Where did that go? That was also in the stack of comics. Bloodstained Teeth was out this week. I don't think it was. It was in the stack. What happened to that stack? There are missing comics. Hold this. Stay there. Talk about Bloodstained Teeth. Tell them what it is. I only read the first issue. Well, what was in the first issue, Phil? Show them the art. Yeah, I'll show you the art. <laughs> Isn't that the sixth one? That oh, is. yes! The guy who, who has to go around and kill everybody that he turned into uh, a vampire. Yeah, he has to go, and Christian Ward writing it. Yes. Which is crazy because usually you would see Christian Ward. Is it all the stuff that was in the box? Yeah. The box is probably still back there. Okay, keep going. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is basically, you know, if this guy doesn't go out and kill all these people that he turned into vampires, then they're going to kill him. It is, uh, it's, it's dope. The art in this book's magnificent. It's beautiful, fun to look at, great. It's beautiful. Check it out. Blood Saint Teeth. Man, Phil left out half the comics, guys. Thought I you, didn't do so. It, you no, didn't take them all out of the box. You didn't read the rest of well, them. Well, no, you, I, I took the ones out of the box that I was going to read, and then... Well, I thought you took everything out of the box. Our bad. I'm going to show you the rest of the trades, and then I'll flop through those comics really fast. Uh, Batgirls Volume 1 came out this week. This is the Becky Clune and Michael Conrad uh, Jorge Corona story, which is an all-star team all the way around. Um, and then Ice Cream Man Volume 8, I almost said Volume 10, Volume 8 of Ice Cream Man is out. This is issues 29 through 32 of uh, one of the best series. If you don't know Ice Cream Man, honestly, you could start here and you'd still be fine. Um, and then Godzilla vs. Power Rangers is out in trade form. So if you didn't... Is it over? Yeah. So if you didn't catch that, this is the whole collection of Godzilla vs. Power Rangers. I'm going to move these really fast so that I can go through these other comics okay, quickly. I'm going to quick. Great. Uh, those are all ones you've read, right? I have. I have read every single one of these comics. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, here we, we lied and it's told you that fault. we weren't going to talk to you for very long, and now I'm going to try to go through these fast. Um, I'm going to switch to Phil C. Okay. Um, from Image Comics, this is issue two of Antioch. This is the spinoff of uh, Frontier Man. If you haven't read Frontier Man, it's basically what if Nick Offerman was a superhero who had retired. This He is now in prison, and Antioch is a supervillain who uh, destroys all of the capitalistic society around him just to get arrested so that he can get to Frontier Man. We have no idea why. We're going to find out in Antioch. Um... From Ten Ton Press, we have issue three of Becoming Frankenstein, which is actually one of my favorite books um, out right now because this is the story of Victor Frankenstein pre-creating, pre-creation of the monster. However, it also follows the monster post the death of Victor Frankenstein. So you're kind of seeing a parallel story of these two um, monsters, as it were, and how they were created. Uh, this is a fantastic book from Ten Ten Press. If you are a fan of Frankenstein, you definitely need to be reading this. Um, that was not this week. Golden Rage, issue four. This is what if society decided that any woman who could not have a baby uh, should be kicked out and put on an island and uh, hidden away forever. They are basically the golden girls on this island um, living out like a uh, mocking, mock, I was going to say mocking Jay, a uh, Hunger Games kind of situation, except now they've all realized that the biggest enemy isn't the other woman on the island. It is the people who put them there. And uh, war is coming. Uh, Bloodstained Teeth, that's what we said. Issue 6 out this week. This is all about the guy who has to kill all of the people that he turned into vampires, except Volume 2 started with this Issue 6, and it picks up with characters that had nothing to do with the first volume. So we're going to see how that all ties together. Um, Seeing of Vampires, Little Monsters Issue 7 from Just Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen is out. This is about a bunch of vampire children who were left alone in a world 
um, and never given any instruction. And now they are the only ones here. And they found the human for the first time at the end of the first volume. And this is the kickoff of volume two and where those human, where these vampire kids are going to go. There is why I couldn't find Nomad. I knew we were missing books. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance from uh, Sumerian. This is actually one of the few that still says Behemoth on it. This is issue four. This is all about two warring kings as they destroy their kingdom because they're battling for who is, should be king. This is just Game of Thrones. If you are a fan of Game of Thrones, uh, this is Game of Thrones without all the strong female characters because I don't actually think there's a woman in this book at all. Um, honestly, truthfully, I don't think I've seen a woman at all in this story. So if you are looking for comics that don't feature women, this is a great one. But if you're also looking for something that's just about kings battling each other, this is your story. Um, that Texas Blood issue 19. Uh, this is the wrap up of this volume of That Texas Blood. It's all, this has been a complete slasher story and uh, Jacob Phillips has done this entire thing in a snowstorm. And in West Texas, which means they're already all thrown off by the fact that the weather is this crazy. But I love that Jacob has managed to draw a snowstorm slasher. Um, this is a great book. Uh, you should definitely be reading it. I think we might have the volumes of it. And I, honestly, I have a lot of issues that are signed by Jacob lying around. Um, Dark Knights of Steel issue 8 of 12. Uh, this, is the, this is Game of Thrones in the DC Universe. And um, as with most things, come to ahead in DC Comics, uh, Constantine is messing up everything. Just the usual. Uh, Dogs of London issue 5 from Aftershock. This has been a much delayed book finally coming to an end. This is the story of a guy in a, a group of like mobsters who killed all of his friends when they were kids and now they are back somehow to destroy his life. Uh, and this has been the wrap up of it. It's actually a really cool story. They are not anthropomorphic dogs. Do not be confused. Also, stop naming your books things with an, uh, people as animals if they're not because people get sad about it. Uh, Count Crawley Amateur Monster Hunter. Midnight Monster Hunter. I always forget a word. This is issue four. This is from Dark Horse Comics. This is all about um, a girl who took over for her brother who was one of those uh, Count uh like sorry. tv sorry. show you totally just threw me off i'll sorry. flip it around so in a sorry. second so, so we can talk about what's on the back so y'all know why phil just freaked out uh this is all about a girl who takes over for her brother who was one of those like late night like elvira trip keeper kind of like b movie horror movie uh host but in fact is actually a monster hunter and the whole time she's having to prove that women uh, can be monster hunters and are strong, but also that she's a really good host for this show. It's been really great. This is the volume one, essentially. We will see another volume of it. And to flip it around and tell you what Phil just freaked out about, it looks like David Duchovny is writing a sci-fi book about aliens because he believes. Um, and so look for this story coming soon. Um, Gotham City, year one, issue two. This is by Tom King. This is the story of like Bruce's ancestors. Um, this is a couple of generations back and when Gotham City was actually still a good place, like they actually talk about how less than nine people were murdered in Gotham in the last year um, and how it's this wonderful, amazing place. Uh, but now the Wayne family baby, who was considered the princess of Gotham, has gone missing and uh, Slam Bradley, somehow alive in this time period. Who knows where this is going? Uh, you know, Tom King loves to take those characters and give us a new story with them, but he is recalling all of this story to Bruce about basically like his great grandparents. Um, and this is, it's a really interesting story. It's Tom King, so who knows where it's going to go, uh, but it's going to go in a great direction. Um, Crystal Planet from Opus Comics. This is uh, what Joe sent, yes. Satriani. Satriani's story. This is issue five. This is the end of that. And this is all about a, a young boy who um, ends up having a battle in an, a war that his dad has been fighting in. And it's all about using like this guitar that can save you, essentially. And uh, really cool art. Good story. And lastly, uh, from Aftershock Comics, this is issue four of Astronaut Down. We've got one more to wrap it. One more to wrap this up. We, yes. One more to wrap this up. And oh my God, I forgot the cliffhanger at the end of this issue was incredible. I caught up on all of Astronaut Down today because we had fallen behind 
Uh, we read issue one back in Austin, and then I, I never got to read issues two and three, and I read it all at one time today. And this story, don't I'm I'm so upset that I slept on it because it has been, it was so good. It's all about a guy who, um, instead of traveling through space, really, really, it's like his consciousness traveled to other space universes and realities, and he woke up inside of other versions of him. Um, in other universes until he found one that he was supposed to be sending back a code that would save uh, his people on his planet from destruction and uh, uh, that didn't work out the way that they thought it would be. This has been really, really good. If you haven't picked it up yet, we have all four issues so far. I definitely recommend it. Um, those are actually the books that are in stock. Uh, you got lucky because I would have gone through way more of those for a way longer time if I would have realized that they were still sitting in my box of books for Phil to read. So congratulations, everybody. You don't have to listen to me talk for another hour and a half about all of those books that I love. But if you want to, you can come by the store anytime this week, and I'll be happy to talk to you about them. Um, if not, you can, uh, you know, always check them out the next time we're on the show. And speaking of comics you can come talk about, I'm going to go through on here really fast books that are out this week. It looks like we've got Moon Knight issue 17 coming out this week. Dark Crisis on Infinite Earth number 6. Venom is back with issue 13. Wonder Woman as well. Um, nice House on the Lake issue 11. We are getting closer and closer to the wrap up of that. Um, we've got Ghost Rider issue 8, Spider-Man number 2 for the new Spider-Man series from Dan Slott, uh, Batman vs. Robin issue 3, Batgirls 12, The Fantastic Four from Ryan North and uh, Alex Ross is out this week, Radiant Black 19, Ninja Turtles issue 134, I'm skipping a lot of these books. Uh, do a Powerbomb issue 6. Spider-Man The Lost Hunt, another new Spider-Man title is out this week. The new Golden Age issue 1 from DC is out. Um, we've got Wildcats is back this week with issue 1. Sabretooth and the Exiles issue 1 is out this week. Love Everlasting from Tom King issue 4. Star Hinge uh, from Liam Sharp issue 5. Dark Ride number 2, very, very excited about that. Uh, Seven Songs issue 6. Minor Threats number Number three from Patton Oswalt's Shock Shop. Number three, Black Panther has got a one shot out this week, just in time to get you excited for the movie. Um, Gun Honey back with a new issue, issue three of Blood for Blood. Very, very, very excited. Specs number one is out this week from Boom Studios, which is the writer of Canto um, and the fantastic artist of the autumnal Chris Sheehan working together. So this is already, let's just write it down as my pick of the week. And uh, there might be some surprises coming that we're going to tell you about when you get those books. Um, Kaya issue two is out this week. Very excited about that. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Armageddon Game The Alliance is out. Um, After School, the horror anthology from Skybound wraps up this week with issue four. Uh, Two Graves number one from Image Comics is out this week. The Least We Can Do issue three. Year Zero, volume zero, it number two is out. Gospel number one is out this week. Soldier Stories number one. Three Keys number two is out. Uh, Ninja Funk number one is out, which is from Whatnot. That's their other new book that they've got. Uh, the Knight and the Lady of Clay out this week. Uh, Cities of Magic issue 5. That has been a long time since issue 4 came out. Um, we've got Traveling to Mars from Ablaze, which I believe is Mark Russell. Yes, it is. Uh, Coachella from Scout. All about a lot of stuff going wrong at Coachella. Um, Pink Lemonade issue 2. Uh, we've got Dark Interlude number 5. Godzilla King of uh, Monster and Protectors All Held the King issue 2 is out this week. Uh, Behemoth from Scout Comics issue 3 is out. We've got Eyes of the Barb issue three. Very excited. We're going to get our first of many Betty uh, and Veronica Archie Christmas books coming out. Mega Rise of the Black Swan number nice. two is out. We'll actually remember to talk about it this time um, since we missed it last time. We have so many books. I'm trying to get through all of them. Oh, my God. There's so many books coming out this week. So you thought you had a good uh, short one this week because I missed half of the books. Well, guess what? Next week, it's going to be even bigger. So um, I'll try and misplace half the set. <laughs> so come back next Sunday night at 9 p.m. to wind down your weekend um, or come into the store this Wednesday and talk about all these new releases with us because I'm really excited about them. 
Um, and I know you should be too. So we'll, <laughs> that was actually perfectly timed because I was going to say, uh, if we don't see you in the shop, we'll see you next weekend here. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and if you're watching on Facebook, thanks for watching live with us. We'll see you then. Bye, everybody.